Ever wondered how a tiny white ball can travel over 300 yards, spin on the green, or bounce off a tree trunk and still find its way back to the fairway? That little ball isn't just a toy. It's a marvel of engineering. Golf balls are often taken for granted, yet every single one is the product of intricate design, advanced materials, and robotic precision. It's not just a ball. It's a science. Behind its polished, dimpled surface lies a world of chemical engineering, material science, and data-driven performance tuning. Its precision manufacturing meets physics in one of the smallest packages in sports. And while it might look simple, a golf ball is one of the most regulated and refined objects in all of sports. Everything from its size and weight to the precise layout of dimples is engineered for maximum performance. Today, we're going inside one of the world's top golf ball manufacturing facilities to answer one big question. How are golf balls made? And trust us, the answer is more fascinating than you think. The story of the golf ball is older than you think, tracing all the way back to the 14th century in Scotland, the birthplace of golf. At first, players used balls carved from hardwoods like beech or boxwood. These early wooden balls were incredibly difficult to control and rarely flew straight. They were handmade, heavy, and expensive. Then came the feathery, a major upgrade in the 1600S. Craftsmen hand-stitched leather pouches and stuffed them with boiled goose feathers. When dried, the feathers expanded to tightly fill the casing, giving the ball its shape. But the feathery was fragile, expensive, and only usable in dry conditions. A single feathery could cost the equivalent of $20, zero cents, 30 today, and might last for only a few rounds. In 1848, the Gouda Percha ball arrived. Made from the sap of the Malaysian sapodilla tree, it could be molded into a perfect sphere. Not only did it perform better, but it could also be repaired or reheated and reshaped. It revolutionized golf by making balls affordable and more consistent. Next came the Haskell ball in the early 1000s. 900 Esmus wound ball featuring a rubber core wrapped in elastic thread, then encased in a shell. This design boosted both distance and control and set the stage for modern, multi-layered balls. Fast forward to today, golf balls now feature high-speed cores, dual or triple mantle layers, soft urethane covers, and precision-engineered dimples, all made possible by robotics, computer modeling, and aerospace testing. And behind each evolution, physics, chemistry, craftsmanship, the pursuit of control, distance, and feel in one perfect sphere. Everything starts with the core. Think of it as the engine of the golf ball. Modern cores are made from advanced rubber compounds designed to react explosively upon impact. Manufacturers use a proprietary mix of synthetic rubber, carbon black, cross-linking agents, initiators, and proprietary softeners. These materials must be measured with extreme precision. Even a small deviation in the chemical mix can result in performance flaws. Too hard and the ball loses feel. Too soft and it loses speed. The ingredients are loaded into massive industrial mixers. These machines need the materials like dough, generating heat and pressure as they blend the mixture into a uniform tacky compound. Once mixed, the rubber is rolled out into sheets or cut into plugs. These plugs are then placed into compression molds. Heated to over 300 DGF and subjected to several tons of pressure, the plugs are formed into solid, perfectly round spheres. After molding, each core is cooled and passed through inspection. Cores that don't meet tight tolerances for size and weight are rejected. Only the most consistent make it to the next stage. Core performance is tuned for the type of player. Softer cores compress more easily, providing better feel and spin control for low swing speeds, while firmer cores favor distance and power at high speeds. Some balls use a dual core system, where a soft inner core is wrapped in a harder outer core. This dual-dimensional configuration balances spin reduction with high initial velocity, especially useful in premium tour-level balls. With the core complete, it's time to wrap it in layers that enhance performance, the mantles.
Mantle layers act like shock absorbers, energy conductors, and spin controllers. All in one, they influence launch angle, spin rates, ball speed, and durability. The materials used include thermoplastic ionomers, thermoplastic polyurethane, TPU, and other elastic compounds, depending on whether the goal is to add speed, reduce spin, or enhance durability. The process begins by heating mantle materials into a pliable state. The molten compound is injected around the core using high-speed molds. Pressure ensures an even coating and eliminates air pockets. In a two-piece ball, the mantle may be the only layer over the core before the cover is added, but three- and four-piece balls have multiple mantles. Inner mantles help manage spin and feel. Outer mantles maximize energy return. Golf ball engineers simulate thousands of swing conditions using computer models and robotic swings. Even a 0.05 mm difference in mantle thickness can affect launch trajectory or green side spin. High-end balls are tested for how they behave on driver shots, mid-irons, and wedges. The goal? Build a ball that performs differently depending on how it's hit. Now comes the outermost layer, the cover. This is the skin of the golf ball, and it's the only part that makes direct contact with the club. There are two primary cover types. Serlin covers are hard, durable, and produce lower spin. They're often used in distance balls aimed at casual golfers. Urethane covers are softer, allowing more friction on the club face. These generate more spin, better stopping power on greens, and are favored by advanced players. The cover is molded over the mantle using precise compression or injection molding machines. Molds are lined with hundreds of microscopic cavities to form dimples. Dimples are the secret to golf ball flight. A smooth ball would generate too much drag and fly erratically. Dimples disturb the air around the ball, reducing pressure drag and increasing lift. Each ball model has its own dimple configuration. Common counts range from 300 to 500, and some premium balls use dual-depth or hybrid dimple designs to optimize aerodynamics. Engineers test airflow using computational fluid dynamics and wind tunnels. They analyze how dimple shape affects spin decay, launch stability, and ball flight in windy conditions. Some tour balls even modify dimple depth across the ball's surface, ensuring balanced lift regardless of orientation. Others use a seamless dimple pattern to avoid performance drops on off-center hits. With the ball fully formed, the final stage is all about finishing and ensuring perfection. First up, paint. Each ball is spray-coated with multiple thin layers of high-durability paint. Some models receive a glossy finish others a matte texture for better visibility or feel. After drying, the ball goes to pad printing stations. Here, logos, model numbers, and alignment lines are stamped using silicone pads that conform to the ball's curvature. Ink must resist abrasion, sunlight, and water. Next is the most rigorous part, quality control. Robotic systems inspect every ball for pericity down to microns, weight tolerance within fractions of a gram, balance tests to ensure there are no dents or light spots, compression testing to confirm consistency, launch monitors fireballs at real golf speeds into nets while high-speed cameras and radar track trajectory, spin, and carry. Balls are grouped by compression ratings and sorted into sleeves and boxes. Defective balls are either shredded and recycled or used as range balls. For a few final facts about golf balls that might surprise you, golf balls have to meet over 30 technical specifications set by the USGA and RNA. Dimples aren't just for show. They are responsible for up to 50% of total distance. One brand tested 1,200 dimple patterns before settling on their current design. Golf balls lose performance over time, especially in extreme heat or cold. Some golf Balls glow in the dark, others contain tracking chips, and there are even biodegradable models designed for ocean use. So next time you tee up, take a moment to appreciate the science in your hands. This small sphere, a result of decades of innovation, carries within it chemistry, aerodynamics, and data-driven design. Whether you're chasing a personal best or just enjoying a sunny round, know that your ball was born from the pursuit of perfection. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to dive into more behind-the-scenes tech stories and comment below what product you'd like us to explore next. This is the Decode Lab. Until next time, stay curious and keep decoding.